Hello, I'm at Super Judge now. Thank God. Today is Friday. Praise God. I told you before why I love Fridays is this. You can take this weekend and go through all those messages for the week or even further. Listen to them one after the other and, and, and just get blessed by them. Praise God. Yeah. Create time during this weekend to listen for, to good information and let them enrich your life. Praise God. Now, let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Thank you for this whole week and thank you for what you are doing in our lives and in our nation. We are blessed, Lord, because you have blessed us. And the manifestation of this blessing is becoming evident to all. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because you will guide us into all truth right now. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. Now, we are still having a midnight prayer for our nation. We, we haven't stopped yet. So join us. You can see the, the, the Zoom ID on the screen. You can join us. You don't require a password to join. You just put in that ID and you'll be admitted into the room. Join us. We're having a wonderful time. God is doing amazing things. Lots of testimonies coming in. Praise God. So I'd like to see you tonight. If you haven't been joining us, praise God. So all right, we are in Romans chapter 10 and verse 10. And I was explaining to you yesterday what it means that with your heart, man believes or one believes unto righteousness. So we're talking about guarding your heart jealously yesterday. Praise God. He said, David said, guard your heart. It's a book of Proverbs here. Yeah. But David said it to Solomon. Say, guard your heart with all diligence because out of that heart are the issues of life. If you don't guard your heart well, yeah, that's why I took you to the, the kind of person David was. Listen, you know, we make this statement, we say one with God is majority. Now, I wonder if you understand the import of that statement. Or you just say, it, you know, one with God is majority. And you're like thinking, you oh, know, what majority? You're thinking of numbers. Listen, it just means that as I stand with God, I can achieve anything I want to achieve. So all I need in my life is God. Yeah. Did you get that? All I need in my life is God. Now, when we say all I need in my life is God, you know, people say, ah, is God, oh, all I need is God. Oh, ah. So that's why I'm going to church now. I'm just, I'm serious with God. I'm serious with church going. I'm serious with, and then they don't even understand the essence. Now, that's what I'm trying to teach you. What's the essence of going to church? What's the essence of reading the Bible? What's the essence of listening to messages? What's the essence of all these things? To put yourself in an environment where the Word of God can come to you. So what you're looking for in all these things is the Word of God. Praise God. So, so now I was telling you something yesterday that if your heart is not cleansed, if your heart is not pure, you're going to have a problem with your believing. And if you have a problem with your believing, if your believing is not working out righteousness, see, because your believing is supposed to work out righteousness. Now, let me bring this to um, human realm. Now. You, you need help, for example. And then you feel someone can help you. But then... There has been an issue between you and this person. And maybe it was not resolved, or maybe you, you, you felt, maybe, you know, sometimes you have an argument with people and you just let it go like that. And we're not even friends, we're, nothing is joined, so please, please, please just go. And then now you need help from that person. Or you need something, and that person is in a position to give you that thing. So you're supposed to approach the person, right? And like, oh, um, I, I need this thing. And it's like it appears you have it. Can you help me? But then you see that this person has your answer. And then you, you, the right thing to do is to go. And then you find it says, 
but I can't go. Say so why? Ah, if I go now, he will think he will use it as an opportunity to get back at me. What's going on there? Your heart is giving you problems. Your heart is giving you problems. Sometimes it's pride. Ah, if I ask this person now, he, hey, he will go and do thanksgiving that me, a whole me, came to ask him for something. He will go and do thanksgiving. He will gather a crowd and tell them this thing. I will not go. What's going on? Your heart is giving you problems. Pride is speaking. But you know your answer is there. Yes. Well, I lie. Instead of me to go there, I'd rather die. You know people talk like that. It's not the person. You have a problem in your heart. You see, that's the same way people approach God. Wrong information that they must have received about the Lord. And they take this wrong information and they begin to execute it. They say, ah. And I told you, you know, several weeks ago we talked about the, the, the young prophet and the old prophet. And I told you something that day. I said, the young prophet shouldn't have died even when he disobeyed God. If he was smarter, he wouldn't have died. You say, how? Yeah, because he had enough time to repent from when the old prophet gave him that prophecy and when he actually died. He had enough time to repent. He did not repent. Why? His heart. See, I want to believe he had pride in his heart. Now, you know what pride can do? Pride is not just raising up shoulder for everybody. You, you can be proud towards God and you will die. It's, it's as simple as that. Because now he felt he had offended God. And how can I... How can I disobey God like this? It's finished. So you can't ask God for mercy. Which mercy? When God has already told me what to do, I disobeyed him. Which mercy do I want to ask him for? Hey, you don't know him. You don't know him. <laughs> oh, blessed Lord Jesus. I told you in that story, notice that when the, lion, when the lion killed him, the lion didn't eat him up. Secondly, there was an ass. The ass he was riding on was standing right there. The lion didn't attack the ass. So how can the lion just kill a man? Don't eat up the man. And the lion doesn't run away. The lion just stands there. And it's like they are waiting for somebody to come and carry the corpse. But that tells you that there was an angel standing right there that prevented the lion from going further than what he was supposed to do and preventing the lion from eating. So the ass was, prevent, was preserved from the lion or protected from the lion. So it means the presence of God was in that place at that time before the man died and after the man died. So how come he did not take advantage of the presence of God? Because his heart wasn't right. Now, when I mean your heart is not right, see, lack of information can make your heart wrong. Yeah. Lack of information can put your heart in the wrong place. I'll give you this. You are hungry, right? And then you run into a place or you say let me go visit a friend or something and then you get to their house and then you see food on the table and like this is my best friend's house man i mean i i can just take this food and eat and just about when you want to, to take that food and say oh no that that food is kept there for the dog now you're hungry. But that simple information. So, I will not eat dog food. Ah, uh, no. Now let me, let me explain this to you. This is not saying the food was maybe like dog canned food or dog dry food. 
this is food people eat but it was dished out for the dog so it's kept there before they take to the dog and then you walk in there and they say that food is for the dog and then automatically your mind just goes zip 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 zip, zip, zip dog food i'm not eating dog food i cannot eat dog food <laughs> and they say um but you can have it like no <laughs> As though they have put something inside that will kill you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Now, just that little information did something to you. And, and, and that thing prevented you now from getting the food to eat that you needed at that moment. Now, this is how a bad heart can affect your believing and will surely affect your faith. Someone else who's wise is it? Dog food, I don't get. I have not eaten. You want to give it to dog? <laughs> is there anything you put inside that is named only dog food? No, it's normal food. Please bring the food. Let me eat before you go and give it to the dog. Let me remain the one you go and give to the dog. And then he will eat it. Why? Because his heart was different. He did not see. He guarded his heart. He did not allow that information to tamper with his heart. It's the same way. Someone comes and says, hmm, you know that pastor just died of cancer. He say, hey, I mean, that pastor that used to pray very well. I say, yeah. Hey, wow. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. And then the next thing, there's a lump somewhere, or there's a pain somewhere. You know what I'm saying? That in, hey, go and check it too. I hope it's not cancer. Hey! Hey! No. <laughs> All kinds of imagination begins to come into your mind. And then you're talking to someone and say, have you prayed about hmm, is it? Have you prayed about it? Um, what comes to that pastor that died? He was a prayer warrior. If that guy can die of cancer, who am I? Where have my prayer reached? You see, your heart, because of the kind of information you have allowed to enter into it, is now preventing you from seeing God for who he is. You know what I'm talking about? With the heart, you believe God. If you allow wrong informations to fill your it will make it difficult for you to believe God. And if it is difficult for you to believe God, it will be difficult for you to walk by faith. So wrong teachings, guard your heart against it. Seriously. There are teachings you will hear. You know, sometimes, for example, yeah, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't have time. I don't know if the Lord will allow us to continue on this next week. I, I, I will try to get more practical. There are lots of informations coming from the pulpit that are dangerous to your heart. I'm telling you the truth, they are dangerous to your heart. Now, the, the preacher might be trying to communicate something. But you see, if you don't put it in perspective, it becomes dangerous to your heart and it will tamper greatly with your faith. But I pray that that will not be your portion. You see, that's why the Lord told us in one of our prayer meetings, you know, during the midnight, the Lord said we should pray that for two prayer points, two things. And I, I, I'm sharing that with you. Number one, that God will give you sight. Number two, that he will never allow you to walk in a lie. So it's a prayer point that you should pray for yourself. Say, Father, please give me sight. And number two, Lord, don't allow me to walk in a lie. And that's the prayer that I pray for you today as you prayed for yourself. Father, we bless you for this whole weekend. You will watch over us and bring us together again. Thank you for what you're doing in our lives. We see the result already. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.